Howdy, shipmates. This is the captain speaking. I know, kind of pretentious, but... Hey, I've got enough ego to do the YouTube thing. I may as well sound a little pretentious, right? Anyway, uh, how are you guys doing this evening? Or morning? Or mid-afternoon? Whenever it is you happen to be uh, watching this. It's evening where I am. Uh... The channel is growing. Let's see how big the channel is growing. According to YouTube Studio, if it'll ever, you know, catch up with me. Which you can't see this because of the glare. Okay, great. 282 subscribers. If you like what you see here, hit like. Subscribe to the channel. Help me get to, well, my next goal is probably should be 300 because it's closer, but I, I think I'm just going to skip the interim and shoot straight for five. But we'll see how that goes. I may change my mind tomorrow. It's been known to happen. Uh, tonight, I am uh, remembering something a friend of mine told me not too long ago in the comments of another video that uh, as an elder statesman of gaming which you know I'm not sure how I feel about that the the, the elder part I guess I can stand being a, a statesman if I have to uh, but as an elder statesman of the gaming world I should be passing on knowledge. Once upon a time, we did this around a table. I don't get that. Uh, I don't get to do that very much uh, anymore. Uh, I don't think any of us get to do it very much anymore uh, in comparison to what we used to do. But usually. That's how we would do it. Now, I started uh, a series uh, called STA Q&A. While I know what the next one's going to be about, we don't know when it's going to be about. It's almost as hard to schedule people to show up for this thing as it is. I'm going to take my glasses off. The lights and stuff are glaring off of it. It's distracting me. Excuse me. Um... Anyway, the uh, the point is trying to get your guests scheduled for for well anything. Uh, these it, it's like getting a live RPG session going. So the next SDA Q and A will appear someday once we can get everyone together. In the meantime, uh, I am. Gonna start small, just a, a little bit of advice for, uh, well, specifically STA game masters, specifically uh, novice ones, people who may or may not know much about uh, Trek, may or may not know that much about the game. So tonight. I'm going to start with uh, trying to set up your campaign. The first thing I need to warn you about is that no amount of planning is going to survive contact with your player group. It's, uh, it's just one of those things. You can plan all you want. Sometimes it works out for you. Sometimes... Not so much. Uh, but the one thing I'm going to work on tonight is getting an STA campaign started. A little bit of planning on your part to help, especially new players, get over analysis paralysis. And if you don't know what that is, you're so lucky. 
but you'll learn. You give some players too many choices and they freeze. And they can't make up their mind about what they want or need to do. And that's analysis paralysis. Just one of those things that happens. And to start with, we're going to sit down and we're going to create a list of species that we're going to allow the players to use. With a caveat, it's not ironclad. I'll get to that. So the first thing we're going to do is sit down and kind of come up with an era, which is also not ironclad, because when you get your players together and you have your session zero, they may decide they don't want to play in the era that you had your heart set on. you got to be able to roll with that. SDA is a much more cooperative game than, you know, what a lot of us old-timers might be used to. So, I mean, don't go in saying, I'm going to run a 24th century campaign set on a space station, and I, we're going to tackle this, that, and the other problem because your players may all want to play in the 23rd century on a starship and just go exploring. And if that's what they want to do, really part of your job as the GM is to help them do that. Also keep searching. You may find players who want to do the space station game, and then you have two games. And you'll be the envy of many of us. But let's just assume, for the sake of this discussion, that we are going to play late 23rd century. after Star Trek 6. And I'm using this because that was one of the campaigns that I ran. I'm just using it as an example. This is what This is what we're going to build our our list of species in. Now, it's uh, a little easier because it is in the 23rd century. You can count out a lot of the species that are in the Gamma Quadrant or the Delta Quadrant books. But if you look at all the f species profiles that we have in Star Trek Adventures as of uh, today it is the 13th of March they just released the uh, standalone PDFs for the Klingon excuse me the Federation Klingon War tactical campaign including that book there are 95 full-fledged player species out there that doesn't include the ones that you have to do a little bit of work on uh, in the uh, back of the books back of several of the books you could play a gem hadar if you want to do a little bit of work but that's what this document is right here i actually sat down and i made the list There's 95 of them, which is, when you get right down to it, pretty impressive. Like I say, you, you, you take things like uh, 
there are species mentioned in Captain's Log and in the back of all the other source books, there could probably be easy another 20. So you've got to kind of narrow this down just a little bit. And it's going to be uh, a little bit of trouble while I'm, while I'm doing this because I made this PDF document and I sorted it on the which source book everything was in. And I should have just sorted it on the species name. But we'll just have to work around that. So here we are back. Oop, overshot that. And we're just going to put allowed species. And like I said, we're making this list here to help newer players who may have a very limited idea of what's available in Star Trek. So we, uh, we narrow it down for them. Now, if one of your players has a lot of Star Trek knowledge and comes to you and says, you know, I want to do this, and I want to play this particular type of character... Let them. If you if you think they can pull it off, and he is clearly not having uh, having the analysis uh, issues and and you know, confronted with too many points, you know he, he wants to play an Ariolo. Okay, so you want to have a Centaur in Starfleet? Great, run with it. But for purposes of this campaign, we make a short list. Twelve, maybe sixteen. Uh, it's Star Trek, so we want to make sure to... And it's the 23rd century. Let's make sure we include all the... Uh, all my typing mistakes. Let's make sure we include the four founding members of the Federation. And then you start to pick out ones that you think you know, might be interesting. Uh, we just released, like I said, they just, uh, the uh, Federation Klingon War just got uh, released if you pre-ordered it, it's shipping even uh, even as we speak. So you can kind of consider what you want from there. I happen to have a fondness for the Enar, so we're going to include that. And a lot of other species are uh, applicable to the era. Uh, we know that there were trills involved because Curzon Dax worked with uh, Kang, Kor, and Koloth uh, sometime after the Kittimer Accords. So let's put trills there. Uh, depending on which beta canon source you want to uh, you want to believe, the Betazoids were there. So let's choose that. Now we've already got Vulcans. Not a good idea to play a Romulan in this time period. But, since we're basing this on my old campaign, uh, it was set. I am going to get this lined up the way I want it if it kills me. What was going on with the player characters is they were working to try and find either a way to correct the damage done to the Klingon homeworld of Kronos 
when the moon Praxis exploded, either help repair that, restore the Klingon homeworld, or find a new world for them. Now, with that being said, it only made sense to have Klingons. And by this time, most of them had uh, taken the cure, as they put it in some of the novels. And they've all gone from their, you know, original series humanoid appearance to the very much more familiar bumpy head Klingons. So I'm not going to specify the smooth-headed Klingons. We're just going to go with, with with Klingon because it makes sense to have a Klingon observer, a Klingon scientist, perhaps, on board a starship that is... Uh, searching for a new Klingon homeworld or a cure for the current Klingon homeworld. What other species do we want to put in here? I am one of those that enjoyed Enterprise, and I really like Dr. Phlox. We're going to include Denobulans in here. Now already we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. My kids played in this campaign. Uh, you may notice over my shoulder here. This is Guy Tarzir, and this is Karen Starry. Those are my kids' characters. And they would never forgive me if I did not include their species. So we're going to have to have Aurelians. And we're going to have to have Cations. And since we've now invoked the animated series, we're going to have to have Adosians because I would feel bad leaving Rx out of this. So now all of a sudden we're up to... Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We could easily stop here if we wanted to. As we go back and look at this, let's think of some other species that might have been in there. Uh, the Edosians, the Aurelians, and the Cations originally appeared in the Alpha Quadrant source book, but since they also appeared in the animated series supplement, I put the listing there. I, I don't think having a Kazintian Starfleet would be uh, appropriate at this time. We haven't met the Bajorans yet. So we've got several species that are already from the core book. We haven't really gotten to the Shackleton Expanse yet. Romulans are at best problematic and would remain so for another oh, 80 odd years. Uh, do I want to open things up to cetaceans? Well, that answer is no. Uh, I think it's a great idea, but. It's not something I'd necessarily want to give a beginning player easy access to. Because we don't know how good a role player they are. On a side note, uh, this very, on, on this uh, discussion, a side note, if you've got a 
player who just can't decide what species to play my recommendation is always 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 especially if they don't have a lot of track knowledge always push humans they know how to play a human that way they can worry about trying to figure out their role in the uh, in the game what they're you know worrying about being the security chief on a starship about being the chief medical officer on a starship they can worry about that and not have to worry about that and how to be a tellerite at the same time make things as easy as you can on your players especially if they're new and just starting out doing this all right so here we've got the Klingon War book that just came out. We've already put the Enar in there because, well, I've always liked them and I thought they were cool. Most of these are background species from Star Trek The Motion Picture. We could easily put any of them in there and just for grins, let's use the Arcadians because they are, look really cool uh, I don't have all my books open but we can find pictures of them later or if you want to put pictures of them in the comments and, and, and let us know what some of these let folks know what these look like go for it but there is number 13 Let's see here. So we've got we've got Klingons. Whole lot of stuff from the Gamma Quadrant. We don't need to worry about it. Here we go. Discovery. These species are all around in uh, in that time frame uh, if you've seen discovery season two uh, commander non is a barzan lieutenant linus is a saurian and saru is a kelpian There weren't very many Barzans in. I like them all. I like all three of those. So I'm going to put them all in. Barzan, Kelpian, and Saurian. And that has taken us up to. 16 and there's still a lot of species from the movies that we haven't touched but most of these are pretty easy to figure out and like I said this is not an iron bound list if you do anything in Star Trek Adventures of Jim be flexible don't be afraid. Like I said, they may come up with a great concept. Hey, I've got this idea for an Afrosian science officer. Look up Afrosians and life is good. But this is going to help keep this sorted because I am OCD that way. There we go. You've got to be flexible, but this will give you a list for a player who says, I don't know 
who or what I want to play. And you can present this list. And there's some there's some weird stuff on there. Aurelians are bird people. Cations are cat people. Edosians have three arms and three legs. Their face is bilaterally symmetrical, though. They don't have three eyes and three nostrils. Weird. But the point is... This is to help limit choices that they have to make. You can always push human on them and encourage, you know, encourage them to play human. But here is the start of something that you can have handy, printed out, when you do your session zero. And yeah, that, that's all there is to that. This is just the, the first thing that comes to mind when I start playing a campaign is where I want it set and what are the players, you know, do I want to limit my players? And sometimes you need to limit your players. But other times, you know, you'll figure it out. We learn by doing. But this is where I start. I make a list and say here pick from this and it saves them from having to go through nearly a hundred um, 120 possible species to try and pick from and that's where I think we're gonna leave off on this one when I do the next one we will uh, probably have the same basic discussion about uh, starship choices. But that's for another day. I am going to get off of this thing right now. I appreciate you coming by. Please hit like, hit subscribe, uh, share this with your friends. If I've missed anything or if I've made any perceptible mistakes, feel free to uh, jump in the comments and let me know. In the meantime, guys, live long and prosper. And thank you again for coming by. And we will see you in the next one.